five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I have to say I want to express my disappointment that <coughs> extremists are being given a platform uh, to push problematic narratives and misinformation about hypothetical issues in order to spread, in order to spread confusion uh, and distraction. It's distressing because the very, very young people that need our protection because they are the ones that are targeted with bullying and harassment. Uh, and as they grow older, even deaf, they are specifically uh, trans uh, minority individuals are specifically the targets of violent, uh, violent murder. It's now, is more, now, the more, now more than ever it is critical for us to rise up to support not scrutinize trans and queer students. We must be supportive of their parents as well. All students deserve to feel safe, comfortable, and supported in their schools so they can focus on their education. Supportive educators, whether they belong to a teacher's union or not, and there are supportive educators who are members of unions and supportive educators who are not, but they are essential. They're an essential resource for young people, especially transgender youth, uh, and queer youth who may feel isolated and unsafe. And with that, I just I want to return back to the substance of why we're here. Um, Governor Polis, welcome back. Um, uh, I, I, I want to focus on uh, just the tremendous uh, resources uh, that provided by both Republicans and Democrats. The CARES Act was a Republican-led act. Uh, the ARP, the ARPA, was, uh, was, was Democratic. Um, to meet the needs of states and school districts to safely reopen. And you mentioned some of the things that uh, you've done with those resources, uh, but I want to drill down on to, to the things that, uh, you know, the pandemic, uh, you know, unfortunately the school closures were a result of a very real response uh, to over a million of our fellow Americans dying. That's a fact. And uh, whether schools should have been opened up earlier, that's a matter of debate, but we need to focus on how we help young people now adjust coming back to schools. Can you tell me uh, what kind of resources have gone into mental health services in high schools and uh, kids that were teenagers that are kept in their homes? Uh, you know, any teenager, regardless of, uh, you know, gender identity or uh, LGBTQ status or whatever, that's a tough time to sort of be cooped up at home. And, but that, tell us about the readjustment that's going on in Colorado schools. First of all, uh I, I think I speak for really all governors to saying we're grateful for the flexibility as well as superintendents that we had. Um, I think we were able to meet local needs in each areas across our state uh, very effectively. Um, and we appreciate that the aid of both CARES and ARPA uh, was allowed to be used to meet the local need rather than a particular program or investment. So in many areas, uh, very simply extended learning time which means free uh, summer academies for learners that are struggling. After school tutoring programs were supported widely with ESSER. Uh, through the gear piece, which we deeply appreciate, we were able to design a program that broke down barriers that existed between school districts and community colleges uh, and other educational entities to support aligned work towards improving student achievement. We were also out of the American Rescue Act funds uh, able to fund the I Matters program, which is providing mental health support. Every Colorado student has access to six free counseling sessions. Uh, one uh, noteworthy aspect is the universality of it. Um, they can be virtual, and they are in many places, areas where otherwise students might not be able to access a mental health care provider or someone to talk to. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, Mr. Pulsifer, I've been uh, interested in uh, it's a form of credential creep. I've seen professions, professional sort of certifications, uh, see the academic work you got to do just sort of expand. Uh, physician assistance programs, for example. I had one at my community college uh, that we, you could get a physician's assistance certificate or certification in two years. And often people coming out of the military, uh, they came to the community college just for that reason. But then the accrediting body, the independent accrediting body, said you had to make it a master's program. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way for us to reverse that trend, because um, I'm interested in people being able to get high-paying credentials, uh, but what, what do we really need to do to educate that person? 
Uh, we would welcome uh, you to take a look at federal involvement around expanding scope of practice so people can practice with the training they have. Uh, we've been very thoughtful about uh, applying uh, a skills-based hiring model to the state, uh, as well as expanding the scope of practice for nurse assistants and others so they can practice fully up to their level of training and don't require additional college just for the sake of college. Um, and so we'd welcome uh, increased federal interest in that and we'll look forward to visiting with you offline about that. Oh, okay, I, I meant that for, 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 thank you, Governor Polis. I meant that for Ms. Polsford, but my time is running out, and uh, I wish, uh, I, I, I'll talk I'll, to you about. I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll allow Mr. Polsford to answer the question since there was a misunderstanding. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Takano. Thank you, Chairwoman, as well. Um, I think uh, we would have to agree with you on that point, which is uh, that uh, the better we can do to actually design learning outcomes that directly map to the skills that are needed in the workforce, and make sure that, in fact, individuals who are traversing those programs are actually um, uh, assessed against their proficiency against that, that we want to make sure that is more traversal, more traversable, more accessible, and that individuals can actually get into the workforce sooner rather than later. Um, there is certainly, even the bachelor's degree notion itself, this idea that you have to have 120 credits of learning before you're actually ready for the opportunities, like that itself is actually a pretty heavy lift. And we've seen that creep even go up in teacher preparation programs, where it's very difficult to even deliver teacher prep in a four-year program. And that's, that's, being that's being done by states and, you know, and uh, different bodies in nursing and healthcare and places like that. It's like, and that is troubling as you consider the cost and the uh, readiness of the graduates that we're trying to get through those programs. Thank you, Thank you very much. I, I now recognize uh, 